Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, we're going to do a get ready with me with new makeup. I uh, went on a little bit of a spending spree. I have a lot of new makeup here. I have a lot of new makeup coming. So we need to, we need to bust out some get ready with me's. Um, some of this stuff I have used continuously. I prefer not to do a first impressions. It's not exactly like the most accurate impression I'm giving you. It's just like a off the cuff first impression. So make sure you take it as such. Some of the products I have used for a week or two and that gives me a more accurate feeling on it. So the ones that I have used for like an extended period of time, I can give you a better opinion on The other ones I'm gonna have to come back and give you an opinion later on maybe. I, I can try and do monthly favorites. I just feel like it's going to be difficult to do. Every time I see other people's monthly favorites, I'm like, I don't even know what to use this month. So there's that. But anyway, let's just dive on into the newness. I didn't really order a base product that's like brand, brand new. Um, and I didn't want to order one for this video because I have so many I need to dig through. So I decided we would pull the most recent base product that I bought. And that would be the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer, as well as the new, uh, the Geo... Wow, Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation. So these two are kind of in the same wheelhouse. Um, this is from the Luminous Silk and this is the Neo Nude, but they're both Armani. And I can tell you right now, right off the bat, that I really, really, really like these. I love this Neo Nude foundation. My preferred foundation is more natural, um, light to medium coverage, and this provides that for me. And it has to be hydrating. I do have quite dry skin, especially in the winter time. So it has to be fairly hydrating for me to enjoy it. And adding on the hydrating primer just makes it sit so much nicer on my skin. I am a primer person. I do like primers for specific reasons, pore filling primers, uh, hydrating primers. So I do have an abundance of them. And I just feel like the more you moisturize and prime your skin before you put on your foundation, the better it's going to look. Armani tends to run pretty light, so I do have to dig up into the higher numbers, but they have such a great shade range in the undertones. I am a very neutral undertone, almost all of undertone. So I need to make sure that I find products or the undertone that works for my skin. If it's too pink, it shows up it's too yellow, it shows up. I need a very neutral undertone. And this Armani uh, product, this Neo Nude Foundation, gives me a really good undertone. So I'm going to apply it with a Refer 31. I like how I looked at the brush to find the number and I know it off the top of my head. And the thing about this foundation is I feel like it blends right into my skin absolutely beautifully. It just meshes with my skin. It looks super natural, but yet it gives me the medium coverage, light to medium coverage that I want, and evens out my skin tone. After going in with the brush, I'm just gonna take a wet beauty blender and I'm gonna bounce that into my skin just to pick up any extra. I kinda went, I went in a little heavy. I had a lot on my hand and the side of me that doesn't like to waste product kicked in and was like, put it all on your face. But unfortunately, my face can't handle handle all that. So I'm gonna just go through with a wet sponge and I'm very lightly tapping to push it into my skin as well as pick up any extra that needed to be picked up. Concealer, I don't really have a new one either. I have a few that I have my eye on, but I need to use up what I have before I'll allow myself to buy anything more. This summer, I bought the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This went viral, and for good reason. It is so beautiful. You need the tiniest, tiniest amount, like literally a pin size amount of it. And I just blend it between my fingers, like such, and I tap it into the inner corners, and then along my under eyes here. And then I'm gonna go back in with that same sponge and just proceed to blend that out. I don't like to use a lot of concealer under my eyes, otherwise it gets cakey. This one tends to stay 
it becomes like one with your skin. You will not see it. It won't cake up. It doesn't get into my fine lines and wrinkles. And for that reason, it's become a instant favorite for me. And drugstore, I'm not a drugstore fan. I don't buy a lot of drugstore products, as we know. So for me to actually really love a drugstore product, it's got to be something special. All right. Eye primer. I have oily lids, so yes, I am 110% a supporter of eye primers. I was using the NARS Smudge Proof Primer. Oh, shoot, hang on, we got one thing to talk about quick. This came with my socialite order that I just ordered. This is the Fit Glow Beauty Night Lip Serum. This is what it looks like, the box, and then you pull the box out and the products inside. I thought that was super cute. Um, so I've never heard of Fit Glow Beauty. I threw it in my cart because I needed free shipping and it put me over the limit for free shipping. So this is a, a night serum that softens, hydrates, and transforms lips. It uses plant ceramides, vegetable collagen, pomegranate sterols, organic plump, um, beet extract. So it's supposed to soften your lips, nourish them, and plump them slightly, but it has no plumping effect. I have used it a few nights, like four or five nights already. I don't have a defined thought on it, I have used it through the day too. It's got this really small doe foot, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, if I look at something like the Clarence Comfort Oils, they have a really big doe foot and they cover a lot of surface area. I prefer that. This one, it's, it's little and I feel like more precise. So it doesn't get my lips in one swoop. I don't know, maybe I'm just lazy. But it has this really unique texture. Um, it's almost like a silicone feel, but it's not silicones in it. But that's the only way I can really describe it. It just feels very light on the lips, not sticky. You can feel that slip to it. Um, but it does soften the lips, and I have noticed that it does hydrate them. It's just not like hydrate them for a long period of time. I still feel like I need to go in with this during the day or some other kind of lip gloss during the day. And I wake up with really pillowy soft lips but they don't last i mean it is like literally minus 28 wind chills today so where i live probably has a little bit of a factor in that but i will keep you guys updated on this i will keep using it the price on this was like 50 some dollars so it was extremely expensive um so the product better perform for that kind of price tag in my opinion like i was saying i am a big user of Eyelid primers, eye primers. This one is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer. I was using the NARS Smudge Proof Primer, liked it, had no problems with it. That one was a, it did have a tone or a, a coloring to it, so it would actually cancel out any veins, but I don't have any veins or coloring on my eyelids, so it wasn't a necessity for me. So I grabbed this Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer out of curiosity. I haven't really tried much with the hydro grip line but i do have the face primer and i still i don't i've never tried that either it's got this little tiny doe foot on it and the product is almost again it's kind of silicone-y one thing i've noticed about this that is a really important is that you apply it and then you take your finger and blend it out but you need to let it sit for a few minutes you don't go in right away with your eyeshadow otherwise your eyeshadow will be patchy it's quite um emollient and then this is supposed to be a concealer primer as well. And you apply this on your lower lash line or kind of in where concealer goes. Should have been done before I applied as concealer, but I am going to apply it right up against my lower lash line because we're going to go in there with uh, eyeshadow. I do notice though if I apply it before my concealer, it does help my concealer to blend out better and I don't get any creasing or any loss of concealer under my eyes throughout the day. So... I have to give it to it. It does what it says. The other thing is, is I use this with my Rowan eyeshadow palettes. Those are notorious. They're a cream product and they're notorious for uh, wearing off or creasing throughout the day. And this made it so those Rowan palettes did not crease, which is a feat in itself. So I have really, really been enjoying this product. I find that it really helps my eyeshadows to stay put throughout the day and keep the opacity that you have in the morning tonight. But the important thing, as I said, was making sure you let it sit 
and kind of absorb for a few minutes. Like this one is starting to feel like it's set down. It'll still give you kind of that tacky silicone-y feel. I don't think there are silicones in here. I could be wrong. I didn't, I did not check the ingredients on this. I've just been using it, so could be. But it does have like a slippery silicone feel. And now this side feels completely set. And this side is starting to set. It doesn't take long. It's just you need to give it like a couple seconds to completely set in so that you don't get wet patchy eyeshadow. It works. It works so good. This product that is new to me but I have used for a while is for brows. Uh, it is not this pencil. This is the Dior pencil that has been around for ages and ages. But I need to brush my brows up to show you how well this e.l.f. brow lift works. This product is actually really good. Um, here's my my butt. I have brows that grow straight down. They are really, really hard to get to like laminate or feather out. So this product does work for me. I just feel like it would work better if your brows didn't grow straight down. I will show you what I mean. Actually, let me quickly fill them in first and then we'll attack them with the with the brow pomade okay now that we're filled in I'm gonna take I just dipped the end of my spoolie I've, I turned it on an angle so I could dip it in and I dip it in very lightly and then I start at the base and I just work the product into the brow hairs from the base so that I can I don't like over apply almost and then I go back and I just pull it through. So this product is interesting. I usually use the Got To Be Gel, which I honestly, for my brows, kind of like better because it is not quite as sticky, I think is my biggest complaint with this. This one doesn't seal them up like a gel. It's almost more emollient throughout the day. And I find that my brows will fall with this. So I don't use it as often, especially if I'm going to be busy doing something that I want them to stay, but it does work. So I just push them up and I'm going to use my finger and lightly push them to my skin. So this will give you like the laminated look. I'm finding I don't love this look right here that's going on, like this really laminated look. So I push them up and then I go back in with my spoolie and I kind of fluff them a little bit. So they're not quite, not quite as laminated, not stuck like to my head. I don't know. I liked that look at one point and I'm just kind of over it. There are the brows. And I just love, I, I did add some bronzer also while I was off camera just because I didn't have any bronzer. But I do have a new face palette that I wanted to use. So we're going to go into that. But the first thing I want to do is just take the bronzer I used on my face with a fluffy brush. I'm going to use a Bristles Beauty EO2. And I want to dust a little bit of this bronzer in through my crease and you will see why. So if you notice that this is looking a little bit patchy up here, I'm sorry, I got my eyebrows waxed. And for some reason, this brand new Baby Butt Smooth Skin right there does not want to let me blend out my shadows. It's been going on since I got it done. And I'm just noticing right now that it's still wee bit uncooperative. So if you notice that, there's nothing I can do about it. With that bronzer tossed in, we are going to dip into this face palette. I did not buy this when it came out. It came out last year. I didn't buy it. I didn't know if I wanted it. It just didn't really like draw me in um, until recently. I watched Tanya Wells do a video on the, the product and there's a light version and a dark version. And she was talking about how beautiful the dark version was. Even though she's the same skin tone as me, she enjoyed the dark version much more. So I kind of got thinking about maybe I did want to try this product. But I think regular price it was 70 some dollars. I wasn't willing to pay that. And I also was like, I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I have a lot of face palettes I don't use. I don't need another one. However... Sephora sale came out like it just came on sale not one of the specific sales it was just on sale on Sephora for $39 and I'm like that'll do it you got me um so I ordered it and it came in with the the, the box is completely destroyed this is how it came 
Um, this is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette, Eye and Cheek Essential. So the box came completely destroyed. Thankfully, the palette was in perfect condition. So it is that shiny material, you can tell it's reflecting everything. And it does get like massive amount of fingerprints on it, but it's really pretty. And then inside, we have five eyeshadows in here. And then we have a highlighter and a cream blush underneath this little protector. I'm not sure how to do this without blinding everybody. So underneath this little protector here, there is the cream blush. And then there's like a powder highlight. And then these shadows are quite deep. That's why I wanted to throw in the bronzer. We're gonna do a little bit of an eye look with this. And then we're gonna go back in, we're gonna use the blush and the highlight. I'm not sure if the highlight's gonna be too dark for my skin tone, but we are about to find that out. So. Just realizing I really should have washed all my rougher brushes because my options are very limited. The first one I'm going to take, so they're labeled outer corner transition smoke inner corner crease, which I'm kind of a rebel. I do what I want. So those mean pretty much nothing to me, basically. And because it's darker, it's not going to work as such for me. So I'm going to take this transition shade, which is like this, the lightest brown in there. And I am actually going to just build it at the outer corner and see how deep it actually is. I will bring it up kind of towards the crease as a transition and blend it in with that bronzer. Um, this is a Refer 02 brush, so it's just a flat shader brush. I'm going in to lay it down and then I'll switch over to more of a fluffy blending brush to blend it out. Okay, going in with the Smith 230, I'm gonna blend this further. And I'm blending it in with that bronzer just a little bit lower, like directly through the crease. Hopefully you can see. Um, to zoom in on my camera, I have to actually switch the lens out and I didn't want to do that. So I'm gonna see if I can do this fancy zoom on Final Cut Pro that I see everybody doing. I am not a professional with that program, so no promises. But I'll watch the video back, the feedback, after and make adjustments for the next video. I'm sorry, you are not getting professional photographer over on this end of the camera. I just really like makeup. So that blended out as per Natasha Denona style, like beautifully. So I am just going to pick it up on that 230, that same brush or that same color, the transition color, and I'm just going to deepen this outer corner. All right, that laid down beautifully. It's, I mean, are we surprised it's Natasha Denona quality? So. Of course it's gonna blend out really nice. The next thing I'm gonna do is go in with this crease shade. It's the darker, another step darker. And I'm gonna even take that lower and I'm going to just blend that right on the outer corner, very lightly. I'm actually gonna to switch to the other eye here because I picked up quite a bit. I just am building a little bit more depth on this outer corner. Also, if you hear ruffling and rustling and wondering what the sound is, if you follow me on Instagram, at Farm Life Glam, you will know that I have a very, very attached border collie, and he lays in here while I video and film, and he likes to either A, move around and shuffle, and you'll pick it up, or he likes to uh, lick himself very fervently. And it's so, so loud. So, if you hear something that sounds like shuffling or licking, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Spot. Okay, that gave me the most beautiful blend. Even for being a dark palette, it worked so well on my skin tone. Like, I'm so happy with it. So, now I wanna go in with, I think, it, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use both these shimmers. This one is pretty dark in a rose gold kind of way. This other one, where is it? This one here is stunning. It is my pick out of the whole palette. When I swatched it, I was just like, oh, that is so my color, 100% my color. So let's take a finger and we're gonna pick up this outer corner, which is that rose gold. There it is there. And I'm gonna just tap it 
on the outer here, over top of that transition we made, this, this blending we did on the outer corner. And I'm gonna come into about the halfway point, just, yeah, that looks so good. I hope you guys are seeing and picking up exactly what's going on here. I'm also gonna blend it on this side, same thing. Okay, I actually really like that. I really like that. I need a fluffier brush though. Ah, oh, here we go. A Raffer 15, one of my faves. I just need to blend around these edges. They're kind of, they're a little too much for me. There we go. Up inner corner, this beautiful neutral, it's not even gold. It's like a neutral champagne color that has a little bit of like a grungy, darker base underneath. This all over the lid with a little bit of the darker outer uh, or a darker shade on the outer corner. Sign me up. And I'm going to tap this all the way into the inner corner with my finger. Natasha didn't know shimmers usually work best on your finger, but I am noticing that these are a different formula than what she usually has. I feel like this may be exclusive to these palettes, this formula, because it's such a soft shimmer. And I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, perfection. Perfection. Okay, let's do this side. I always go in with my right hand when I do my left side and then I end up struggling. And then I think I do have a left hand for the left side. And it is beneficial if you switch your fingers to correspond with your with the side that you're working on. Oh, I love that color. Absolutely love that color. Okay, going back in with the <clears throat> Smith 230, and pick up a little bit of that transition shade. And I just want to run that on the lower lash line. I actually don't think I want a darker outer corner for here, so I'm just gonna blend that underneath. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. Just because the colors are so dark, I don't want it to smoke too much out on this outer corner. Let's finish off the eyes. I was debating whether I should do the rest of my face or the eyes, but let's finish off the eyes. I'm taking my Refer Eyelash Curler and I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. This is Tower 28's Make Waves Mascara in Jet. And this one, it, it, it gave me a little bit of a, like, a thought. I had to think about what I felt about it. So the brush is a plastic pokey brush. I do not poke myself with it. It's really unique. When you push on it, it actually has a little opening I don't think I can get it to show on the camera but it has like a little opening that shows up um, as I was using it they were saying in the thing that you use this curved edge to build volume and then lengthen using the outer edge one thing I do notice is it picks up a lot of product so I am quite careful to like take a little bit off before I go in and I do what they say I use the curved side first to go in and build volume at the lash line because that is something I like to have it is a tubing mascara as well, so I do like the removal of it, and it does stay. There's no flaking. The only thing I didn't like at first, so I'm going to flip it over and use the other side to do the lengthening and separating. I have to be careful with it, and you have to accept that your lashes are not going to be fluffy and separated with this. This one is more of a clumping formula, or you can get a lot more clumping with it. Um, but it lengthens like crazy. Like there's the difference right there. And the clumping effect in some eye looks, I do like, it's actually beneficial. I prefer it to look a little clumpy and long when I have more of a grungy eye look or something a little bit more, something that I want to see the eyeshadow through it. It does tend to show off that eyeshadow look underneath and it gives it more, um, yeah, I guess just more the work that you did isn't covered up. We all know those mascaras that like cover everything up after you've worked so hard. And I don't like that. I do like that this one does give that, me that look. But you're not getting fluffy lashes with it. I'm scared that it might dry out a little bit quicker because 
I can tell even using it today that it's getting clumpier and clumpier. Okay, so that's one coat. That's all I go in with. And then I just touch this to my lower lashes. Because I have longer lower lashes, I can't use this all the way down the end, the, to the ends of them. Otherwise, I end up just getting transfer all over my lower lash line like I just did. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's the mascara, Tower 28 Making Waves. I do like it. I just would also pair it with having something like the Hourglass uh, Unlocked Mascara, which is also a tubey mascara. It comes off super easy. This one also, it comes off like lickety split with water. So quick. And I've used oil on it and the oil does not take it off. You have to use uh, water to get it off. And that's how the Hourglass one is as well. The Hourglass one I just find makes it a little bit more um, fluffy. So that's kind of my feels on it. I do like it. There's a place for it in my life. I just would have to have this one as well as something else that's a little bit more fluffy, volumizing. You know what I mean? Like more separated lashes. This one I find is just more a certain type of look. You get it? You feeling me on that one? <laughs> okay, let's... Okay, so first thing I want to do is go in with the cream blush. This looks right up my alley. I'm going to take my my sponge, my beauty blender, and I'm going to just try and pick this up on my beauty blender to start with. If this doesn't work, we will pick it up on a brush, and I'm just tapping it on my hand to make sure I'm not going to get super amounts of product. I'm going to go in and just tap this where I put blush. Oh yeah, wow, 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 okay. <clears throat> My voice is wanting to stop you working, and I think I'm, I have now run into my kids' reading time. Shit. Okay, that is stunning. That is a stunning color. I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. It looks brighter in the uh, viewfinder than it does in person. It looks so pretty in person, and it is, like, blended to be one with my skin. Let's do this side. And it's applying quite easily. I think if you go in with less product than I did at the start, you can really build this up so it's very user friendly. It's not going to... Yeah, so you can see I went with way less product on that side than this side. So it needs to be built up, which is good because this is the dark palette. This is supposed to be for dark skin and for my skin tone it's working well just because of that factor that it's a buildable formula. But yet, it'll work on darker skin tones as well. I really like that about this palette. Put a little bit over my nose. And I am going to dab a little bit across my forehead and on my chin. That is really, really, really pretty. Okay, here's the part that I'm scared of. I'm gonna use a Refer 20. This is their fan brush. I'm going to lightly pick up this highlighting shade because I think it's going to be too dark for me. And I tried it on my hand and it looks very potent. So we're going to, maybe I should do this side first. Going to go in and very lightly kiss the top of the cheeks and up across here. That's, that works. Um, I don't know if I can see it when I look straight ahead. I don't think so, but I have to like tap a ton off and go in very, very lightly with it. I was worried it was gonna show as a cast and be super, super, super um, bright. Like, look at that. It's definitely, definitely bright. But it's not horrible, and I can use it. I think I can definitely use it in the summer when I when I tan, and I'm not completely completely white yet. You know, like green, winter white, that that level. I'm not there yet. So, it's pretty. Uh, would I reach for it? Personally, I'm more into a cream highlight or no highlight at all. 
So I don't know. I guess that will be something to see if I do or not. Let's pop just a tiny bit of this on my pinky finger. It's so creamy. Into the inner corner here. Yeah, super nice. And then I'll just go across my cupid's bow here. Okay, I'm just gonna set everything with my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. Just so it lasts. I'm gonna let that set. Once it starts to dry a little bit, I'm just gonna go over everything with my sponge and kind of push it in. Especially that highlighter. I want it to look a little bit more blended in with my skin, not so much like a powder. Yeah, it looks good. The eyes look amazing. That is that is a really nice everyday eyeshadow palette. If you're looking for a light smoky look, I really, really like how that turned out. I would probably toss in some eyeliner, especially like a nude one on the lower last the lash line, but we're just gonna leave it for today. Um, I'm now officially running behind, and I think my kid's gonna miss his class. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> finish up and get him on. I'm taking my Victoria Beckham O2 liner. Lastly, I bought these Merit uh, Signature Lip Lightweight Lipsticks, and I've used I bought Slip 1990 in Cabo, and I've already used them quite a bit. These are so good. Like, so, so good. Merit lipsticks are just super creamy. This one in 1990, I figured would look good with the smoky look of the eyes. But they are super hydrating. They give you the option of, like, this kind of opacity. If I keep building, it'll just build up on top of itself. And they have, like, such a nice lasting power as well throughout the day, but they're easy to reapply. So, definitely... One of my favorite lipsticks, hands down. And I have a very small collection of lip products because they expire and I threw a bunch away one year and it just about killed me. So I have made it my goal to keep my lip products down to a very minimum. These, mm, so good. There we go. There is the finished product. I need to get my button gear and get off of here. So I hope you enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it. I am in love with this Natasha Denona face palette in the dark. If you, I think it's still on Sephora for $39. Total buy at $39. I would buy this at $39 for sure. I don't know that I would pay the $77 for it. Um, I just feel like that's overpriced for it to begin with. So at $39, yes, I would grab it. It gave me such a great look. The shimmers are super unique. And I'm loving the blush color. This will be a blush to go to for me for sure. And then I think I pretty much stated kind of my opinions on everything else throughout the video. I hope you have a good idea of it. Um, and I want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for spending the time with me. I truly appreciate it. If you have uh, the time or the want to, like and subscribe. I'll be back with other videos. And I hope to see you there. And I cannot have my bangs hanging in front of me. It looks better but it drives me crazy. See you guys later.